Why is this even a debate, I wonder? A foreign company has been given the go-ahead to develop an open pit mine in the Lower Zambezi National Park. Whoever came up with the idea of mining in a national park must not have been thinking very straight. This is when you realize that, mm -mm, at this rate, Kwasara Chabe Kugulisa Victoria Falls for real. Now, I know you are asking, what about the judge who gave the go-ahead? Is he not concerned about the environment and our wildlife? I find that the judge in this case was put in a very difficult position because the ruling on this matter had already been passed in 2015 and the appeal had remained pending since then. And as you know, they say justice delayed is justice denied. It is a shame, however, that the current judge did not rule on the substance of the case, but instead relied on technicalities to remove the injunction which was acting as a stay on the ruling which was passed by another judge, Justice Charlie, who has sadly since passed on. By now, you have all heard that it was Minister of Lands, Natural Resources and Environmental Protection, Harry Kalawa, who gave the Australian company the mining license. Mr. Kalawa is now in the opposition. And in case you wonder how he feels about the matter as of today, he has been quoted in the media alleging that the decision was made collectively by, according to him, the entire cabinet, chaired by late President Michael Sato. Now, listening closely, I hear Mr. Kalawa trying to communicate but not able to say that it was not his personal decision, but he was merely carrying out orders from higher up. The reality is this. Cabinet quorum can be as simple as the president and one minister or him and the vice president alone. Once those two or three gathered agree on a course of action, all the members of cabinet are bound by that decision. Key point to note, in awarding the license, Mr. Kalawa went against the advice of the Zambia Environmental Management Agency, Zema, which said no to mining in the game area. Enter Sylvia Masewo. Why? Because she was the Minister of Tourism at the time. So the game parks and other such tourism sites were under her ministry. There was a parliamentary select committee constituted to deliberate this matter, where Ms. Masewo reportedly voiced a strong opposition to the plan of developing an open pit mine in the Lower Zambezi National Park. While today Mr. Kalaba may claim that the entire cabinet was behind his decision, the facts show clearly that there was dissent from at least one cabinet minister, whose opinion, by the way, I feel should have carried the most weight, given that the area they were proposing for the mine fell under her ministry. Her opposition actually became subject of a parliamentary point of order, which was raised by Jack Mimbo on the 13th of February 2014. He challenged the leader of the House, then Vice President Guy Scott, to provide guidance and state government's official position, seeing that two ministers of the same cabinet were publicly on opposite sides of a matter, and that was in contravention of the Ministerial Code of Collective Responsibility. On 20th February of the same 2014, Mr. Scott told the House that Ms. Masebo had made a submission on the matter to the committee in camera or behind closed doors. Therefore, he stated that a submission should have been kept private and it could not be taken as a government position. He further confirmed that government's position was consistent with what had been announced by the Minister of Lands, Harry Kalawa. In summary, yes, that decision did enjoy the blessings of cabinet. Now, about a month after this, it was announced that Sylvia Masewo had been fired from a position as Minister of Tourism. The reason, we were told, is that she had illegally fired and overruled a decision made by the Zambia Wildlife Authority, our management, an agency under her ministry. Now, if Harry Kalaba was within his rights to overrule Zema, which fell under his ministry, how come Ms. Masewo was fired when she overruled Zawa, which similarly fell under her ministry? Dots do not connect. What's more, Ms. Masewo was later tried in court on charges of corruption over that same Zawa saga, and she was acquitted. The court said there was insufficient evidence to convict. So, dear friends, against the advice of Zema, the agency in charge of environmental protection, against the advice of the Ministry of Tourism, the ministry in charge of the land, our cabinet, God knows how many people were in that meeting, could have been as little as two for all we know, decided that mining in a national game park was a good idea. And then today, they are back. They want more powers. Bill 10 wants cabinet to have the authority to sign foreign treaties and agreements without asking permission of parliament. Bill 10 wants us to allow cabinet to take on loans quietly alone without asking parliament. I say we cannot allow this. Otherwise, we'll just be kept wondering every day, what are they going to sell next? The whole country to the highest bidder? Kaya, Kaya, Kaya. 
will only find out when we are being evicted. Let us remind our leaders, land is the heritage of all Zambians and its management and control must promote the welfare of all of us. And as the Land Act says, while all land in Zambia is vested in the president, it must be controlled and administered for the common good of all the people of Zambia. In what ways could mining in a game park be good for all the people of Zambia? See, the same way that government had the power to award that license, if he so wished, Mr. Lungu and one minister can sit tomorrow and resolve to revoke that license for the common good of all Zambians. Tell them, Mr. Investor, I'm sorry, but the people of Zambia have asserted dominion over their game park. Tell them, Zambia is big. Let them find another patch, as long as it's not a protected area like our game parks. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.